Mm, yeah. I love my HBCU. Uh, and boy, boy, I love it, love it. Yeah. I love it, love it. Yeah. I love my HBCU. Yeah. And man, yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Mm, yeah. Man. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Mm, yeah. I tune into the HCCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a loss. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, she tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, yeah. he know what he be talking about. Talkin Mike about. and Charles, Talk. they know what they be talking about. Talkin they about. compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they won a loss. Yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, uh, yes sir, yes, and pay attention, sir. cause he gonna teach a lesson. Yes. Hey, welcome in, it's another tune, it's transmission of A.B. Drew here on Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Welcome to episode 522 of Inside the HBCU Sports Lab radio show and podcast. The show that's covering the HBCU sporting uh, HBCU diaspora and all things HBCU sports for the institution, large and small. From NAIA to the NCAA, we share insights and information on the HBCU sports culture and HBCU athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBCU athletic programs and the business of HBCU sports. I'm your host, Charles Bishop, along with A.D. Drew tonight, and we're filming from our home studios and sending us in a live to our KCOH 1230 AM studios with the Texas Southern Radio Hall of Famer, Ralph Cooper, in the beautiful home of Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. Hey, Drew, what's going on, good brother? Happy World Sports Journalist Day to you, my brother. And who would I rather be with on World Sports Journalist Day but a member of the Black College Sports Network as I work my black job <laughs> covering black college sports at the black college sports network that's a great point <laughs> black job covering black college sports uh it's funny you should say that because you know it's that time of the year where people start calling and like hey when does such and such play okay i'm gonna be out there in houston uh, that weekend i'm like huh what, what, what what's going on? so i got my schedule pulled up here of course my mom shout out mom she's trying to find out when jackson state comes out here to play texas southern so uh, get the guest room ready, all that great stuff. This is that time of the year because everything kicks off uh, next week. I think SIAC Media Day. Yes, uh, SIAC Media Day is next Wednesday, followed by SWAC Media Day the following Tuesday. CIAA will be one day later, and then we will wrap it up with BIAC in the – What's that gonna be the I guess that would be the fourth week. Fourth week in July. Month because we're the fourth week, that fourth Tuesday in uh in July. So uh mm. yeah. It's the, the last week, the calm before the storm, AD Drew, before it uh you climb back into football season once again. Man, man, f- climb back into man football day is next week. Football yeah. season is here, bro. I'm already right. doing my homework. On the players that's coming to media day and the teams and the storylines so that I can ask appropriate questions. Because there's nothing point. worse than when you get to media day and either A, you have no question, or B, the person who you're doing an interview with, ask the three questions that you were going to ask. So you got to have <laughs> something in, res- in reserve. You, and, and we've all been there. As what happens every media day, it's like, uh oh, he took my question. Okay, now what? <laughs> yes. and, and that kills the follow up. <laughs> right, exactly. The, exactly. The, the answer the person, the answer the person that gave, killed what I would have asked for a follow up. Isn't that how it always works? <laughs> how it always works, man. Well, Charles, yeah. what, 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 what's your standard go to question when you can't think of anything? To ask a, a student athlete. Oh, standard go-to question. Oh, here's here's one football. That, football. Yeah, that, uh, here's one absolutely that you're gonna hear uh, at every, every uh, one of these types of events. So, what do you feel? Uh, how do you like the atmosphere here? That's that's almost like a standard something that you're gonna hear. It's like, oh, okay. Next. <laughs> 
<laughs> exactly. Uh, my my go to question that I would have in reserve. So out of all the players that are on your roster, coach chose you two to come here. How special is that that coach shows you two to come here? Yeah, that's one. That's what if, if when when y'all hear that, I'm out of questions. <laughs> you say, uh, 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 all the bullets out of the chamber once you hear that one. Oh man. Well Exa- interesting exactly. Interestingly enough, June first, I'm sorry, July first marks uh the start of a brand new conference, AD Drew, as the HBC Athletic Conference now is official. Uh, and this happened as of yesterday, uh, where you have uh, uh, what was once known as uh, the Gulf Coast Athletic Conference now becomes the HBCU uh, Athletic Conference. And there you go. There are the teams. Is the new league consists of 13 member institutions, including Stillman, Dillard, Fisk, Oakwood, Philander Smith, Rust, Southern of New Orleans, Talladega, Tougaloo, Virgin Islands, Voorhees, Wilberforce, and Wiley uh, are the teams of Voorhees and Wilberforce are new members of the conference uh, as a league as of July 1st, expanding the league to at least 10 teams and two automatic NAIA bids uh, in women's volleyball, women's basketball, men's basketball, and baseball. And it also creates softball uh, as a championship sport and will have one automatic bid to the NAIA championship for each women's cross country, men's cross country, and softball championship. So uh, this is a a quote here. The HBCU Athletic Conference is dedicated to nurturing the whole student athlete through strategic partnership conference expansion and sharing the rich heritage of our member schools. We are moving in a direction that continues to show why we are the place where winners thrive. And that's a quote from Dr. Kiki Baker Barnes, who is the new HBCU AC commissioner. I shouldn't say new, but uh, commissioner of what was once known as the Gulf of South the new conference. conference. Of the new conference. The conference exactly. formerly known as the Gulf South. There you go. <laughs> the conference formerly known as the Gulf South. Charles, Charles, I was thinking, mm. and just looking at this, and this just, just, just came to me. 13 is such an ugly number for a conference. <laughs> It, it, you know, it, it, it just doesn't bath up like like it should. 13, you know, mm. 12, 14, 16, 10, you know, those good round numbers, whenever you got even numbers. Mm-hmm. So at 13, obviously a perfect scenario would be 16. Just, just wishful thinking. Who, who would you target if you were Dr. Kiki Bacon Barnes? Who would you be having conversations with? First, to get you to an even number 14, and then those last two, NAIA schools. Any of them that you can think out there? Mm. I might ex- I look at trying to expand westward. I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on in terms do, of do a, you, a team do you off try, the top of do my you go head. Take another, do you go take another team, try to take another team out the Red River? I'm just, I'm just throwing something out there. That would be an option. Uh, uh, what's my, my, my Bluefield you, you, State? No, Bluefield's uh, D2. Bluefield is D2. You're correct. I'm drawing a blank right. on who, but who's another team on, on, on that, to add out there. On that side of the ledger, you know, you've got Payne, who is NCCAA. You know, they used to be Division Two in the SIAC. So if they were to come up to NAIA, I think this would be a good conference for them to go into with Voorhees being right there. UVI would be kind of geographical rivals for them. So that would be a good one. Uh, Arkansas Baptist has been transitioned to to a four-year school. I'm I'm trying to move myself westward and I know I got Wiley sitting out there. Is there another Texas school that might be I mean anybody not named Xavier because Xavier's not coming back. I don't think Xavier's coming back. So you've got what you got uh Houston Tillerson, Houston uh, Tillerson. Texas College, yeah, uh Paul Quinn, and who's the one I'm missing there in the Red River, not named Xavier, it's because it's five of them. You had mentioned Texas College, right? Jarvis. Jarvis, Jarvis Christian, Jarvis, Jarvis Christian, Jarvis, you know. yeah. Jarvis Christian, yeah. Obviously, you've got uh Arkansas Baptist. Uh 13, how about Paris Stoke? 
Oh, Harris. How about Harris Stowe in St. Louis? Yeah, I was about to say, I knew I was trying to move myself out west, and I was trying to think of uh, who out west. Uh, you know you know how Mike Mike's like, what about teams on the other side of the Mississippi River? So, yeah. Well, Harris Stowe is on the Mississippi yeah. River. Right. <laughs> Literally. Exactly. Literally on the Mississippi River. <laughs> but you say, yeah. you, uh, you wanted to expand it out from 13 to 16. 13 gives you that chaos number? 13 is just such an ugly number because – Think about think about your basketball tournament when you go do your brackets for basketball tournament. You know that's just mm. a odd, that's an odd play. Somebody gonna be playing on a day by themselves with that that's... with the in, in, in that thirteen. Uh, you know they obviously they gonna put more games in that one, but you know it just creates a funky bracket when you if you take all thirteen teams to the tournament. So <laughs> that's, that's just little stuff like that. Just little stuff like that. I feel you. I feel you. I'm not mad at that. that Actually, Edwin Harris Stowe is uh, just outside of downtown St. Louis, uh, butts up to St. Louis University, yeah. And it's not it's not that far from the Missouri River. It's probably about fifteen miles from the Missouri River, but it's uh, closer to the Mississippi River. Yeah, when I spent time up there in St. Louis, I made sure to visit Harris Stowe a few times up that way. <laughs> I don't my- know why. <laughs> I had <have> reasons. Charles, <laughs> I grew up in St. Louis and did not know Harris Stowe was in St. Louis. <laughs> and did not know it was an HBCU hey. until I got to high school. Mama was like, find you another HBCU up there. Yeah, okay. You tell you ain't gotta tell me twice. But I digress. We've moved on 30 years from that. <laughs> Oh, let's take a look at some other news and notes around HBCU sports. Uh, HBCU baseball will be well represented on the USA Collegiate National Team. And uh, this, of course, comes to us from uh, HBCU Game Day. Uh, USA Baseball finalized the rosters for the Collegiate National Team, which features the International Friendship Series, the Summer League Tour rosters. Both rosters will feature HBCU players. So let's take a look at some of those HBCU players that are on the wide roster. Kyle Walker, infielder from Grandma State, he had a heck of a swag tournament. Uh, He will be represented here on this uh, roster. On the Summer League Tour roster, uh, catcher, uh, a slash infielder from Alabama State, Jamal George. Uh, He'll get some run uh, on this Summer League Tour roster, as well as his teammate, Luis Rodriguez, who's a right-handed pitcher uh, from Alabama State. Pablo Torres, right-handed pitcher from Bethune, Cookman will also be on this Summer League Tour roster, as well as K.J. White, who's an infielder from Southern. All these young men, we've we've watched them, uh, especially in regards to uh, their play within the SWAG swag tournament, all tremendous athletes. Kudos to all of them. Yeah, congratulations to all of those uh, baseball players and some of the HBCU coaches that are also a part of the uh, part of that baseball tour, you know. I wish baseball was an Olympic sport because maybe these would be some of the players who would have a good chance of making it to the Olympics. But oh know, yeah, base- baseball is not an Olympic sport anymore. I don't think it's going to be added in time for twenty eight, which is a doggone shame that you've got baseball here in America. You've got Dodger Stadium out there, which would be a beautiful stadium to play baseball and or softball. Hmm. In the Olympics, so no doubt about just it. Just wanted to throw that out there. Well, let's take a quick break. AD, we'll be right back here on the other side, and we'll get to some more uh, HBCU news and notes here on Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. We'll be right back. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. The human voice has always connected audiences with experiences. Major brands all across America have trusted Kevers Voice time and time again. Conversational, powerhouse, intelligent, and sincere. That's the voice you need for your creative marketing process. K-E-A-V-E-R-S-V-O-I-C-E dot com. 
Covers Voice, Covers Voice, CoversVoice.com. Always on, all the time. Nope. Nope. You want him? Ooh, I like him. Quick, the quicker picker upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker upper. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge, featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you if your team, if they want to allow that. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes, sir. And pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. And welcome back here to in the Inside HBC Sports Lab. Charles Bishop and A.D. Drew. As we take a look at some more news and notes around the HBC strategy for interesting development. Uh, this happened, uh, again, July 1st. Uh, yesterday, Jackson State University, they bring back uh, former, former SWAC AD and uh, Jackson State University Division of Athletics and Vice President, Director of Athletics Ashley Robinson, announced the return of uh, Kia McClellan as Deputy Athletic Director yesterday. Um, McClellan returns to Jackson State after a two-year stint as the AD at Mississippi Valley State, where he oversaw several facility upgrades, including a new video board at Rice Titan Stadium, uh, most recently a new field turf project. He also commissioned a new logo uh, for the athletic department, and this just happened in June of 2024. So uh, significant and Hakeem McClellan coming back to Jackson State. Uh, some things under uh, Hakeem's uh, leadership there at Valley. Uh, several significant projects and partnerships were realized at Valley, uh, including a partnership with Kimbrough Trucking. Uh, Valley now has that uh, uh, 18-wheeler now for the uh, equipment going to games. A uh, black-owned business in Indianola, Mississippi, resulting in the donation of an 18-wheeler truck. Upgraded the tennis course, updated the track, enhanced the softball deck, upgraded the weight room, installed new computers in the athletics academic lab. Uh, a lot of tremendous success for Akeem McClellan during his time at Valley. He now comes back to Jackson State. So uh, Mississippi Valley State's loss is definitely Jackson State's game, AD. Definitely, definitely. And that's why I was going to throw it back at you and say, what does Jackson State adding a talent of that caliber to the administration of the athletic department mean for a Jackson State. We saw what he was able to do at Valley being the number one. So being the number two, I'm assuming the number two at Jackson State now, what does what does a talent like that mean for uh, your alma mater? Uh, it's tremendous. It's tremendous having him back in the fold because that's another uh, bright, talented uh, leader that's coming back into your uh, your leadership structure, if you will. And, you know, Dr. Ville, he puts out the – uh, the AD rankings uh, in terms of uh, what guys are getting done at their respective schools. And I had no doubt that Hakeem was doing a lot of those things to get uh, himself mentioned on that list in terms of moving up into the top five. Now you have him back into the leadership fold, if you will, at Jackson State, another bright, innovative, uh, young individual who gets to uh, have his hands on some things in regards to some, some, some new initiatives that Jackson State Athletics is trying to do. So I think that's that's huge, and we'll see uh, what direction that uh, Mr. Valley State is trying to turn to because I, I think he got a lot of things up and rolling uh, during his short stint there at Mississippi Valley. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so we'll look at some other things in regards to HPC news and notes. Uh, Lincoln, Missouri, we mentioned, of course, the new conference coming online, HBCU uh, conference. Lincoln, Missouri, they're going to join a new conference, first time in a quarter century, uh, for the third time in school's history since joining the Mid-America Intercollegiate Athletic Association in 1970. 
Lincoln University of Missouri has once again found a new home. As of today, the Blue Tigers uh, have officially made the move to the Great Lakes Valley Conference in all of its 14 sponsored sports, including men's and women's soccer, uh, each hosting its inaugural seasons in 2024. So quick background on Lincoln. They originally joined the MIAA in 1970 before leaving in 1999 to join the now defunct Heartland Conference. Uh, they rejoined the MIAA in 2009 and have been in the conference ever since. Uh, the Great Lakes Valley Conference now becomes one of seven Division II athletic conferences with at least 15 member institutions. So Lincoln of uh, Missouri going into the Great Lakes Valley Conference. A.D. Drew, your thoughts on Lincoln moving over to the GLVC. Well, first of all, we know one of those uh, conferences with 15 member institutions or more is our very own SIAC. Just thought I would throw that out there as a, oh, by the way, but uh, great from a travel point, great for the fans of Lincoln, Missouri, but Charles, mm. Lincoln did not make this move initially, I don't think, for travel purposes. And the reason I say that Lincoln, along with three or four other members, former members of the MIAA, moved over to the Great Lakes Conference also. And if y'all have seen Lincoln's football schedule over the last couple of years and know Lincoln tends to go 0-4 in their conference, mm -hmm. well, those teams that were whooping up on them in the previous conference, all those teams, some of those teams came over to the new conference with them. So, uh, <laughs> it's going to get easier for Lincoln, at least when it comes to football. They've been able to be competitive in uh, in basketball, where they've uh, been above the Mendoza line in basketball. And I do believe Lincoln is bringing back baseball this year for the first mm. time. And I know, but I do believe they will be starting their baseball program this year. What do you, that'll what be do you something also. When a, when a school moves to a new conference, what do you think are some of the advantages, especially in regards to Lincoln moving itself over here to the uh, Great Lakes Valley Conference? Usually, you got, let's think about what's the purpose of a conference, Charles. is mm -hmm. like-minded institutions getting together to compete athletically to make it easy to schedule games, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully there's some synergy Lincoln being an HBCU, probably one of the lower resource institutions still in, in their new conference, just like they were in their old. And because there are no other HBCUs really within on the D2 level, I, I want to say Kentucky State would be the next closest HBCU. And that's probably five to six hours from, about to say, from Lincoln. Not, There's no HBCU. Yeah. Uh, between them and Lane, those are going to be the two closest geographically. So coming to the SIAC from a travel point of view is kind of out of out of the question for a Lincoln. So they've got to do the best thing that they can and hope that their fans will be, uh, I guess, will be on board with it. But also the other thing is it opens up new recruiting territory. Mm. Not only for uh, student athletes, but just for gen pop students, as I like to call, them. just for general students. Sure, because now you're going into new new areas. You 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 beat new people. Uh, hopefully, you have some alumni base in some of those areas where you're going to. If not, you you will soon have new alumni base in those areas. So there are advantages, but obviously, you're losing fans and alumni base in your previous conference. So sure. hopefully it's a good trade-off. And somebody did some type of analysis to make sure that this move made sense both mathematically and with their uh, with their alumni. Well, in regards to the mathematics, one benefit, the travel accommodations, uh, eight of the members uh, uh, in uh, Lincoln's new conference will be there in the state of Missouri uh, as opposed to four when they were in the MIA. So you, you mentioned that as being, being one of the benefits is the travel parts. Yeah, yeah, L less time out of class. I mean, that's a benefit for any of our student athletes. No doubt. Uh, on the news and notes, HBCU basketball player 
uh, joins the Los Angeles Lakers Summer League team. This is a story by Jerry Hoffman on HBCUsports.com. His former Texas Southern all swag board, Jordan Nicholas, has been uh, announced as a member of the Los Angeles Lakers 2024 uh, Summer League team. Nicholas played three seasons at Texas Southern, very recently from 2021 to 2023, uh, helping lead the Tigers to the SWAC championship uh, each year. He averaged 10.1 points and 7.2 rebounds on 54% shooting from the field in 88 games at Texas Southern. He was named all SWAC second team in 2023 after putting up uh, 10.7 points on a SWAC leading 8.9 rebounds. Uh, side note, I was over at Texas Southern a couple of days ago, saw him working on the mid-range shot and, and, and getting some uh, some shots up over there. But uh, huge news for former Texas Southern Tiger Jordan Carl Nichols. He'll be on the Los Angeles Lakers Summer League team as we – Transition into we come off the, the NBA does such a tremendous job, AD, uh, where you continuously talk NBA basketball from the finals through the draft, and then summer league will start. Free agency, yeah, no, yeah, free agency, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Summer league. And then you got the bonus of the Olympics this year. Then you got so the, the summer league. So the summer league is over. You going into the Olympics. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, nice uh, job by the NBA, scheduling-wise, because they, they stay yeah. on the tips of our tongue, especially we're just going through this free agency period. Hurt my heart. Clay Thompson no longer go to State Warrior AD. Uh. I, I, wanted him, I wanted him to sign with the Lakers. I, I'm not going to lie. I wanted him to go play for his father's team. His daddy wanted him to sign with the Lakers, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> did you hear the interview today on ESPN? I missed it. What did he say? No, uh, dad, dad said he was he was a little bit disappointed. He, he Basically, he grown. He make his own decisions. I wish he would have came home, but I understand. That's I understand. basically what dad said. Yeah. I mean, yeah. He put himself you know. in a great position. You talk about a team that's just right there on the cusp of the NBA championship, and now they add another shooter to go along with Luke and Kyrie. So. I think Clay and another shooter. Like that, that, that's their only shooter. They ain't had no shooters last year. That the reason that they lost the Boston. Yeah, yeah. They, they had to find that piece. They had to find that that piece yeah. on the opposite side of wherever Luca and Kyrie is operating from. So. But but with those two uh, downhill you know, players, as I like to call them, because Luca and Kyrie like to go downhill, and uh, they're driving guards. You know, having somebody who you could kick or one pass way extra pass who can stretch the defense as one less defender that's going to be clogging up the lane. Cause you have to respect Clay Thompson with his, uh, with his three point shooting. So, uh, so I mean, think about it. If you think about the number of lobs that Dallas threw and, and now you got a shooter outside, if they yeah. get one other, if they get one other shooter, that team going to be dangerous, bro. And, and you know that team is going to be dangerous. It was quote a, a, a down year for Clay. He still averaged seventeen points. So you know it's like that's a heck of a piece, uh, especially at this day and age in terms of where he is in his career. You're not asking him to be that perimeter defender anymore. He gets to do what he does best, and that's shoot the basketball. Craig Hodges. Ah, I like that. That's a good. By, that's a good. Uh, Brian Shaw. Yeah. Not Brian Shaw, uh, 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 Ray Allen. Ray that should be Craig Hodges, a Ray Allen type player, somebody who's out there more for the threat than the actual ability to make the shot. There it is. That, that's a good point. Oh well, and now you got uh, what's my guy leaving the Clippers, going out to Philadelphia? You got uh, Paul George, Pete, Paul George, PG three, heading out to uh, Philadelphia. PG thirteen. So. Man, and CP3 went to the Spurs. Yeah. CP3 CP3 is at the Spurs. It's gonna be throw, gonna be throwing the ball up to uh uh, uh Wimby. Wimby Yeah, Wimby. Yeah, I, I wonder how many assists he's just gonna have. Just so, just throwing it up there. Just, just go get it, big fella. That was a smart move to pair himself down there in San Antonio with Wimby. He gets to he gets to parlay another couple of years out of that. Hey, here's a name for you, Charles. Mm. Shooters. Ah, Lloyd Free. World B. Yeah. It's a lot of young folks have no clue how lethal World B Free was from uh, from downtown. Oh, man. And, and I'm, I'm going to give you one more. And, and then we can go to break on this one. Cool. How about Andrew Tony, man? 
Andrew Tony. That's a whole. That was that was my eighty three Sixers team. Oh my God, Andrew Tony, the Boston Strangler himself. Boston Strangler. <laughs> Man, I give you another one. Then we can go to break. Downtown okay. Freddie Brown. Since we're gonna go in that direction. <laughs> uh, that name had a meaning. That's all I'm going to say. There you go. There you go. Man, we'll be right back here as AD and I remember this about old 70s, early 80s uh, NBA action here <laughs> inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Itchy, squirmy, scratchy, family not getting clean. Get Charmin Ultra Strong. Go get them. It just cleans better. With a diamond weave texture, your family can use less while still getting clean. Goodbye, itchy squirm. Hello, clean bottom. <laughs> <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? At Hampton Law, our primary goal is to provide non-traditional yet effective solutions and redefine the approach to client legal concerns. As your trusted legal advisor, we believe in sophisticated, personalized services that eliminate the confusion and complexity sometimes associated with legal matters. Our high standard for client care and concern, coupled with our extensive legal knowledge and skills, make Hampton Law a resource focused on the protection of the client's interest and overall goals. We value our clients and truly enjoy working with them. Visit thamptonlaw.com to conveniently schedule an appointment online. Tamika Hampton Esquire. 1631 Rock Springs Road, Suite 336, Apopka, Florida, 407-494-1471, thamptonlaw.com. Nope. Nope. Come on, him. Ooh, I like him. The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the Quicker Picker Upper. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge, featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website www.slowburnwaco.com That's www.slowburnwaco.com When it comes to professional learning, teachers deserve better. From the leader in online learning, Stride brings you the Stride Professional Development Center, an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that gives teachers choice and flexibility, allowing them to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. It's time you take charge of your learning. Visit us today to get started. You can press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. The recent announcement of black jobs being taken here's a list of jobs for the blacks job opening number one is stove light supervisor this person is in charge of making sure that the stove light is on and if the bulbs need changing this tradition is for us because it allows our ancestors to find and season our food in the middle of the night which brings us right on to job number two. You need at least 15 years of training for a cast iron skillet trainer. This person is going to make sure that the cast iron skillet is passed down to the family member that knows how to cook, but also knows how to properly clean it. We will not be giving this to just anyone. Now, number three is very important, the spade <laughs> project manager. Not only are they in charge of taking the tools out of the deck, they're also in charge of scoring and making sure nobody trains anyone on how to play spades, but the people that sit down know how to play. And where would we be without number four? Number four is the t-shirt order director. This person is in charge of making sure all the t-shirts are ready for family reunion, all the t-shirts are ready for the home going, all the airbrushing is done, all the lettering is correct, and everybody has their $35 to $40 in on time. I see you, Tony. 
Now, the Kool-Aid coordinator is right up there with the macaroni and cheese master. We need five references. Do not play. And the homecoming shift lead will make sure we're licking up and at every event leading up to homecoming. How about this? I'm sorry. I, uh, I was on Black Indeed uh, today and <laughs> just popped up, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Content creators, boy. With time on your hands on the camera, you can do a lot of stuff, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's continue all news and notes from around the HBCU stratosphere. We got a couple of former HBCU sprinters heading to you. We talked about the Olympics heading to Paris, uh, representing their home country. Uh, and um, among these athletes, uh, former HBCU track standout from Howard University and All America Jessica I uh, will represent the Ivory Coast in this year's Summer Games. Uh, she won the 200 meter dash at the 2024 African Athletics Championships. Uh, clocking in at a blistering 22.84 while earning a spot in Paris. Uh, she edged out her teammate, uh, Mamadou Kone, uh, at 22.99. Uh, in May, uh, the Kone I her teammates were part of 4x100 team uh, at the 2024 World Relay Championships uh, in Nassau, Bahamas, where they qualified uh, for the Paris Olympics. So uh, kudos uh, to the former all-American standout from Howard University, Jessica By. You also got Jamaican hurdler with HBCU ties. He makes the Olympic team. Former Johnson C. Smith hurdler Daniel Williams punched her ticket uh, to Paris for her first ever Summer Olympics after her performance in the Jamaican Olympic trials. Danielle Williams finished second in the 100-meter hurdles, running a 12.53 behind Afro Nugent. Uh, who set a Jamaican national record, uh, and this is the second Olympics in a row that will feature a CIAA athlete after former Livingstone athlete Cornelia Hayes qualified for the U.S. team in the 2000 Olympic Games. So kudos uh, to those Olympic athletes heading over to Paris. Uh, we got summer games action, always a fun time, especially. I had a tremendous time this weekend, AD, watching the uh, Olympic trials, trying to see who's going to make the team. Yeah, uh the high jumper from UAPB, I know, made the, made uh, yeah. the Olympic team. Uh, I, I name name escapes me right now. Uh, yeah, there are a couple of uh, yeah, there are a couple of uh, athletes from Ever Waters University. Alexis Alicia Alexis is going to be representing Trinidad and Tobago at the Billie Jean King Cup. And incoming freshman forward Miles Austin will be representing uh, Great Britain, and he's mm. going to be an incoming freshman at Ever Waters University. And what I've been, what I'm working on, Charles, is trying to compile a list of all of my HBCU stars, uh, both current and former HBCU stars who are going to be making an appearance in the Olympics. And uh, did you see uh, Shakari Richardson obviously uh, set that record in the uh, in, in the 100 and just missed the double as far as qualifying in the 200. So uh, won't be doing the 100-200 double. And the uh, the young lady from Kentucky who, who just obliterated the 400 world record. Did you see that, my brother? I 400 did. hurdles. I did name escape Man. right now, but 400 meter hurdles, and it took it 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 caught my eye because it's what my my child is running right now. So I was uh, taking notes and whatnot. But man, anytime, anytime, anytime in track, when you win an event, a sprint event, and no one else is in the frame, mm. when you cross the finish line, you have done something. You know, she had to win that by. And be doing track. I was looking at it. Okay, you've got the exchange zones uh, there at the, at the finish line, mm -hmm. and the exchange zones are twenty meters long. So the half the exchange zone goes behind the finish line. So that's at least ten meters, correct? That is. And it's it took at least another second and a half for somebody to even get to that exchange zone, which tells you how far she dominated. When she uh won that thing by four seconds, four seconds in a sprint event in a 400, she won it by four seconds. 
Yeah, yeah. How about that? How about that? Let's talk about taking she, off. She, she, <clears throat> she, she. They was running. She should have ran against somebody who wasn't running the hurdles to see if she could beat them. That's how fast she was. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. Let's take a look at some more news around the HBCU stratosphere. And we had mentioned it, uh, I think, on last Thursday, but deserves to mention again Kevin Granger, Dr. Kevin Granger, uh, associated with Texas Southern in some form or another for the past 30 years. Uh, he was uh, rewarded by the university's board of regents as they approved a contract extension. Uh, Granger will remain at Texas Southern through the 2028-29 athletic and academic year. Uh, you talk about uh, a lot of accomplishment that Texas Southern has gotten done uh, coming off another history-making season academically and athletically. Uh, they have done a tremendous job during his time there, uh, rewarded with a contract extension. And uh, I'm sure when Dr. Bill talks about his uh, – uh, HBCU AD rankings, whenever that time may be. I think we'll see Dr. Kevin Granger uh, quickly that has moved up the list and um, probably would have cracked the top five. Even if he does not crack the top five, the fact that he's done what he's done there at Texas Southern and I, I got to give him, I, I do have to compliment on this and I said I was not going to get it to my alma mater, but the way that he came back from what happened in ja in January with the mm -hmm. football coaching hire at Texas Southern mm -hmm. and was able to recover and still have a successful season, still keep the confidence of the board and the president and everybody else to be able to garner a contract extension less than six months after going through that fiasco, I just hope and pray. That my alma mater can figure it out. And my athletic director at FAM, you can figure it out the way that Dr. Kevin Granger was able to figure it out and stay, stay true to the course despite that setback in late December and early January that they had. Like a phoenix rising from the ashes, uh, like you mentioned, Dr. Uh, Granger bounced back from that contract extension. Uh, and Texas Southern Athletics, they won the C.D. Henry Award uh, this past uh, season that goes to uh, the SWAC's best male athletics program. So like you said, tremendous bounce back. Uh, you hope to see that uh, wherever uh, there is some sort of adversity within the athletics department, you hope to see that happen uh, with that. And you mentioned uh, your alma mater, of course. So I uh, would love to see that happen in FAMU, uh, being a strong uh, history-making athletics uh, that FAMU is. And uh, shout out to uh, Alex Hines. Thanks for putting that uh, name in the chat for us. Caleb Snowden. Uh, yeah. Caleb Snowden. Uh, I, I appreciate that because I, I drew a blank, which is not the first time that I've drawn a blank on the air. But uh, yeah, Caleb Snowden. Now, he took second in the high jump, so uh, he should be uh, going to the Olympics. Now, I did read somewhere, but they said although he was second, he did not make the Olympic qualifying mark. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I hope that he did make all the Olympic standards that he would need to make to uh, be able to compete over there in Paris. No doubt about it. Let's take another quick break, and we'll come back with some uh, final thoughts here in the last uh, frame here of Inside the HBCU Athletic. I'm sorry, Inside the HBCU Athletic. <laughs> inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Charles Bishop and A.G. Drew. We'll be right back. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is Always Ultra Thin's reinvented with the Always Triple Protection System. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thin's. This is always like never before. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, 
and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvay. As technology continues to bring changes to the world of education, it's time we also reimagine teacher professional development. Gone are the days of one-size-fits-all learning that can only be accessed at a specific time and place. The Stride PD Center is an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that allow educators to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. The best professional development plans are those that include a level of flexibility and choice for educators. Whether you're a teacher, school, or district, Visit us today to take charge of your learning. You can press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want to lot, yeah, and who the ball, who So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir, and pay attention, because he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. And welcome back here to Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Charles Bishop and A.D. Drew here. Last segment, and this, I wanted to make sure I did this here in this last segment for everybody that calls, texts, uh, everybody asking, when is such and such as homecoming? I have a list of the 2024 HBCU homecoming schedule. Uh, make sure you take out your pen and pencil, paper, so you can write down when your particular team's homecoming weekend is. And, you know, we always get homecomings. They start Roughly about the first of October. Last weekend of September, first Last of October. Last week of September, yeah, first of October. It runs through about the first weekend of November. I want to make sure I put this out for everybody, uh, especially my mom, so you, you, you don't have to call and ask uh, when is Jackson State's all coming. I'm going to make sure I put it out there right now. So let's start off. October. Oh, uh, uh, Charles, 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 before you get going, mm. what day is the heavy Heaviest homecoming day before you even get into each each weekend. Uh, heaviest homecoming weekend. Which Saturday is the heaviest Saturday? This year is going to be October 26th. October 26th. That would be last October, Saturday in October. Last Saturday in October. That, this year, that's going to be uh, the heaviest uh, homecoming date. So let me go through. Let me go through right. and call out some of these uh, dates here. We'll start off October 5th. October 5th. Homecomings on October 5th. Alabama State will be playing FAMU for homecoming. Alcorn will be playing Arkansas Pine Bluff. This is October 5th. Texas Southern will have Virginia Lynchburg for their homecoming game. Morgan State, they will be taking on Lincoln of Pennsylvania for their homecoming. And Delaware State rounds out October 5th. Uh, their homecoming opponent is St. Francis of Pennsylvania. So October 5th, you have homecomings with Alabama State, Alcorn, Texas Southern, Morgan State, and Delaware State. So make sure we get our pen and pencil out for that. And then October 5th, those are the homecomings. October 12th, Alabama A&M and Tennessee State both have all homecomings on October 12th. Uh, Alabama A&M's homecoming opponent, Bethune-Cookman. Tennessee State's homecoming opponent, Eastern Illinois. So those are the two homecoming games that will be played on October 12th, A.D. Drew. A light, light day. Uh, hope there's a classic somewhere to catch on that day. That's all I'm going to say. Gotcha. October 19th, here are the homecoming, uh, homecoming schools and their opponent. Ooh, this one's a nice one. North Carolina a &T. They will face off against Hampton October 19th. That is their homecoming opponent. Why? Why? <laughs> Why? No, I, I, no, no offense. I take a, taking a look without looking at the schedule. Mm. Why would you play Hampton for homecoming when Hampton should be a gate game? That's, a, and that's I would another want my homecoming game. to be a second gate game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, the goal is to create okay, at least. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. A couple of homecoming. Uh, you yeah. need a revenue game. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. October 19th, Southern. Southern Jaguars. They will take on the old oh, Corn State Braves for homecoming. Ooh. A little spicy. I like that. You about to say something, AD? No, no. Keep going. Okay, okay. Mississippi Valley State. They have Bethune Cookman October 19th. 
scrambling. They will be taking on UAPB October 19th. And rounding out the October 19th homecoming schedule is Howard. They will take on the Tennessee State Tigers for homecoming. So you got to uh, – I like October 19th. You got North Carolina a t versus Hampton. Southern takes on Alcorn. And Howard and Tennessee State, all homecoming games. Pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Pretty, here, pretty interesting. Here we go. Well, uh, at no least more. Tennessee – wait, hold on, hold on. At least Tennessee State gets to enjoy a real homecoming when they go to Howard. Ooh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that, Brandon. I didn't mean that the way that came out, Brandon. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Look at you being messy. <laughs> Here's the heavy date, October 26th. Oh, these are some pretty good ones here. North Carolina Central, their homecoming. They will be taking on Morgan State for homecoming. Ooh, that's interesting. That's, but those, that not only may be homecoming, but that may be for the MEAC that, championship. That that could be uh, MEAC championship implications on, on uh, North Carolina Central's homecoming. Interesting. Uh, Bethune Cookman, they're the it team going into this upcoming season. Bethune Cookman, their homecoming opponent, Jackson State. Jackson State will be making a trip to Daytona for Bethune Cookman's homecoming. That sounds like a gate game. Yes, guess y'all, I guess y'all ain't going to Jacksonville next year, this year. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you, Arkansas Pine Bluff. Their homecoming opponent will be the Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils. Uh, nice uh, proximity homecoming there for UAPB. Hampton, their homecoming will be against Elon. Uh, here's another one that has potential, MEAC championship implications. Norfolk State's homecoming will be against Howard. Norfolk State, Howard. Norfolk State, Howard. Yeah, versus Howard. That's uh, a potential homecoming uh, matchup. A uh, uh, homecoming matchup, I should say. Prairie View A&M, October 26th, they will have Texas A&M Commerce. And rounding out October 26th, the South Carolina State Bulldogs, their homecoming opponent will be Delaware State. You take a look at October 26th, North Carolina Central Wait, versus, versus Morgan. Mm-hmm. Bethune Cookman, Jackson State. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Norfolk Howard. I don't know. Uh, None of those gonna to top the Magic City Classic that weekend. So, Magic City Classic is that week weekend. That's gonna be a fun. That's gonna be a busy, busy weekend in HBCU football. And I, uh, I believe that's no, it's the next week. I was gonna say I thought that was Tuskegee's homecoming, but I think I, I think it is the following week. I, I, I gotta going get to that up. So. Yeah, because this is uh this is yeah, uh, FCS. Can... This is FCS. Yeah. Strictly FCS. Yeah. I, I gotta mix in the D twos next week. So we'll do the D2s next week. I'll right, make sure I'm on. Tim Funk. Uh, round it out. Homecoming <laughs> schedule. November 2nd. Florida a and will be taking on the Texas Southern Tigers as their homecoming opponent. And November 2nd, Jackson State's homecoming opponent will be the UAPB Golden Lions. So those are your homecoming opponents. Hope you had out your pen and paper uh, for your particular school. But now you should know who is your homecoming opponent. All these obligatory texts and calls. Hey, who we play for homecoming? I tried to cover it all right here in this segment, AD Drew. Got some interesting matchups for homecoming. Yeah, it's definitely some uh, interesting matchups. Uh, obviously, you know, people like me who are alums and you who are alum of two schools, you know, do, you, do we do both this year? Do we do one? Do we do the one closest to where we live at? If we don't live where our where our school is that we attended, you know, because a lot of us have geographically relocated since those college days. So a lot, a lot of decisions have to be made. Or do we do those classes? Because those five weeks that you rattled off right there, there are a lot of big games or and or classics that'll be going on at the same time as those uh as those homecomings. And Everybody, remember, get the homecoming early, mm. prepay for your parking, mm. get, go ahead and get your tickets now, go ahead and get your hotel reservations now, because you know, you know we like to wait until the end of September 
for the second Saturday in October, trying to get hotel reservations, rental cars, and all that kind of stuff. And that is very true. It's it's a good idea to get on top of that stuff now. <laughs> uh, securing the travel, the the travel accommodations, the hotel accommodations. Uh, I, I got I got one suggestion. Uh, Airbnb. Airbnb, you know, Airbnb. A lot of times, especially for homecoming weekend, mm. is cheaper than than hotels. Get two, get two, three, four other families going for an Airbnb, and you will save a tremendous amount of money versus paying three hundred dollars a night, uh, four hundred dollars a night, depending on where you're at for some doc, for a hotel. I'm gonna give you another weekend that is already starting to fill up. September 14th, Southern comes to Jackson. I already talked to a couple of hotels in Jackson. Uh, I will say the markup has happened. <laughs> oh, that particular it's, it's real. weekend in the markup is real. Uh, but you already have, I know one hotel that is, uh, booked up, uh, for that particular weekend. Uh, another one that is about at a 90% capacity already for September 14th weekend. But, uh, it's good, uh, that the, uh, I guess the HBCU ticket sales or the HBCU travel accommodations are already uh, forming, taking place. Make sure you get that stuff knocked out going into July 4th. Sometimes you know where you're going to be going for homecoming. Uh, you get that information out there now. Go ahead and get on top of that. Um, uh, the, the the travel part of it, the hotel part of it, the AB, Airbnb. You mentioned that's another uh, alternative as well. But you know you're going to homecoming. Might as well take care of that stuff going into this weekend. Right, AD? Exactly, exactly. And uh, word for all my Rattler uh, friends and family out there, keep in mind, FSU does play at home the same Saturday as our homecoming. Mm. And that homecoming would be November 2nd. There it is. Make sure you take care of that uh, yes. Tallahassee uh, and surrounding area. Tallahassee. <laughs> And, and you know they already go. They already try to rob you in Tallahassee with the hotel rates anyway <laughs> on a home game. So yeah. you can just imagine what it's going to be like on that weekend. Got to work on those Chamber of Commerce sponsors. There it is right there. <laughs> Any final thoughts, A.B., as we go into this, uh, uh, the holiday portion of Inside the HBCU Sports Lab? Since we're going to talk about holidays, uh, Charles, I, I do have to ask you uh, this question. you going to fire the grill up this weekend. Charcoal or propane? Charcoal. I'm in Texas. I, I, I have to ask these questions, bro. <laughs> I have to. I have to ask these questions, bro. How dare I uh, touch a propane tape? Huh. Coleslaw, potato salad. Depends on whose potato salad. I will stay safe with coleslaw. That's a good one, though. I you, like say, that. you say that again? I say it depends on whose potato say, salad. Say that again? I depends on whose potato salad. I stay safe with coleslaw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait. Let, 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 let's go back. Let's go back to the potato salad. <laughs> mustard, yes or no? Yes, mustard. Okay, you know, some people don't put mustard in their potato salad, bro. Yes, I, I have mustard. to ask these type questions. Man. Please, please have okay, some flavor okay. in it for me. There you go. Hamburger, hot dog. Hamburger. I'm a hamburger guy. Yeah, hamburger guy. Mm -hmm. All right. Chicken or grilled fish? I've never. Mm, I'm a chicken guy. Um, Chicken and ribs guy. <laughs> because right. if that was the next with ribs or a brisket, I tend to favor ribs. So look at G Boom Holly. Mustard please. I... <laughs> <laughs> That's a good I got, question. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I got you, man. I got you. And and, and the last thing. Soda or lemonade? Neither. Oh, well, outside the adult beverage. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it PG. Okay, let's keep it PG. Uh, let's, <laughs> hey, let, let's go wink, wink. Let's go lemonade. Yes, yes, we'll go. We'll go. 
<laughs> lemonade with the stretch. <laughs> we'll go. People don't with... play around. Yeah, he ain't playing around. Yeah. <laughs> Great stuff, man. Great stuff. <laughs> As we go into the holiday weekend, uh, be safe, everyone and out there. Yeah, go for it. Please, be, with the fireworks, please be safe with those fireworks. Uh, ten toes, ten fingers. If you got them now, I want you to have them uh, next week when we come when we come back home. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. If, if you lost one, don't lose another one. Let's just let's just make sure that we keep that we, we keep what we have. Be safe with those uh, firecrackers, and uh, let's hope that those those are firecrackers and not other things that are being shot at that point in time. And, uh, you know, uh, this, this stay safe, everybody, uh, don't drink and drive, uh, all, all, all that good stuff. And please make sure you use lighter fluid and not gasoline. <laughs> please use lighter fluid <laughs> and not gasoline. <laughs> Eddie drew there is somebody's golf course calling. Oh, oh, man. oh, here go one. Oh, here go one. Last like one, it. Charles. Last one. G Bone threw a good one out there. Baked beans, baked beans bro. Baked beans all day, G Bone. Yeah, I only have five baked beans for me. Yeah, baked beans. You, yeah, just one thing about about both of them. I I have to remain outside because you don't want me inside after either one of those. That's all I'm gonna say. And on that note, and on that note. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, this brings a conclusion to Tuesday's edition of Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. You know how we always close things out. I'll start things off. Of course. Lecture. Oh, it's got to be dismissed today. We'll see you next week, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Travel up.